The start of game procedure for EDH is as follows. All players announce the choice of their general and move that card to the command zone. Players may then sideboard if you're using the optional rules that allow for a 10 card sideboard. Each player draws a hand of 7 and players may mulligan using a modified partial Paris method. The partial Paris method works like this. You draw your 7 cards, you kind of review your picks. You decide which of the cards you would like to keep, and then you set the ones that you don't want face down outside of the game. You take the ones that you want to keep, set them face down. In this case, I removed three cards, so I'm going to draw two cards. So it's going to be X minus one. I'll pick up my next two cards, and then I'm ready to play. A couple of play rules that are important to understand. Being a general is not a characteristic, it's a property of the card, and so the generalness of that card cannot be copied or overwritten by any continuous effects, and it doesn't change with control of the card. If a player would be dealt 21 points of combat damage by a particular general, there's an alternative win in EDH. So you start with 40 life, however, Regardless of the amount of life that you gain, if you take 21 damage from the same general, you can also lose the game. The general damage win condition kind of works like this. If a player has been dealt 21 points of combat damage by a certain general during the game, that player loses the game. This is an additional state-based effect. General damage is cumulative throughout the game. Nothing can reduce the amount of damage a general has previously done to a player. Because it's a property of the card and not a characteristic of the game object, a card is still the same general even if it leaves the field and returns. So what that means basically is that if I go in and I start trucking with my Dorn Siege Tower and I hit you with this guy straight to the face five times and deal you 25 damage, you lose the game. If Dorn is on board and hits you for 10 but leaves the game and I pay for his additional recruit costs later on, bring him back in, hit you for another 3 to the face, 3 attacks to the face, you're basically still going down. While effects can raise a player's life total, it doesn't remove the amount of damage previously taken from a general. So if you cast Beacon of Immortality and double your life, it's not going to save you from dying from 21 points of general damage. General damage is specific to each general and it's not combined across generals. So if I'm playing Doran and somebody else is playing Vorosh the Hunter, basically Vorosh would have to hit you for 21 points of damage and Doran would have to hit you with 21 points of damage for either of the generals to win. It wouldn't be the case that if you took 21 combined that you would lose the game. It's the case that a player can lose the game even if the 21 points of combat damage is dealt by his or her own general. So if somebody steals your general and starts pounding your face, you can die to your own general damage. Let's talk about some other characteristics of generals. While a general is in the command zone, it may be cast. As an additional cost to cast a general from the command zone, its owner must pay two each for each time it was previously cast from the command zone. So. In the example of Doran, his initial casting cost is black, green, and white. After he's been removed to the command zone and I want to play him for a second time, I have to play two colorless, black, green, and white. If he was removed four times, then I would have to pay eight colorless, black, green, and white. If a general would be put into the graveyard, or exiled from anywhere, its owner may choose to move it to the command zone instead. This is a replacement effect. The creature never goes to the graveyard and will not trigger such abilities. In the case of cards like Child of Alara that say when they go to a graveyard, do X, that ability is never going to trigger. However, if you would like the general to go to the graveyard, you certainly can put them there. 
Generals will move to the library or the hand as normal. Only transitions to exile or the graveyard may be replaced. So if you have a card like Oblation, you can stick a general on the bottom of a player's deck and have them draw two cards. There are a couple of other rules that you can look up online. I suggest putting EDH in Google and you can find some of the more popular sites like MTG Salvation, the official Elder Dragon Highlander uh, website. Uh, there's a link to Elder Dragon Highlander rules. Um, you can reference things like the league rule that says an EDH league consists of a regular group of players who frequently play together using the same decks. No two players in a league can have the same general. Within a given league, generals are allocated first come, first serve, and are preserved between meetings or games. No, may, no player may have in his deck uh, the general of any other player in the game and it should be replaced with other cards before the game begins if that is the case. Uh, you know, if you understand EAH then you already know that it's designed to promote a social interaction. It's founded on a social contract, otherwise known as a gentleman's agreement. Unsporting conduct, whether it's extreme like flipping over a table or screaming at your opponent or just simply being a jerk should not be tolerated by other players. Refusing to play with an antisocial person is the fastest way to better an EDH community. However, because players have varied opinions of what constitutes fair and fun play, a recommended ban list is maintained to help guide players toward a good social experience. House rules or fair play exceptions are always encouraged if they result in more fun for the local community. If you want to enjoy the type of games that you've heard associated with the EDH, Avoid some of these cards. This is the ban list. Ancestral Recall, Balance, Biorhythm, Black Lotus, Coalition Victory and Fast Bond, Gifts Ungiven, Grindstones, Kokosho the Evening Star, Caracas, Library of Alexandria, Limited Resources, Lion's Eye Diamond, Yawgmoth's Bargain, World Gorger Dragon, Upheaval, Tinker, Time Walk, Time Vault, Sway of the Stars, Recurring Nightmare, Protein Hulk, Panoptic Mirror, Max Sapphire, Ruby, and all the other Moxen, and Metalworker. The only bra uh, the only general that is banned at this time is Braids, Cabal Minion, and that went effective in uh, July uh, 2009. So thanks for taking some time going through the rules. You know, check some of our other videos out. We go through deck construction of some popular deck archetypes. We have the Most Hated General series, and basically we're going to keep the site up and running as long as you guys keep watching.